Hello guys, once again, welcome to the Forensic Science classes and in last few classes, we have uh, understood about the crime scene, the basics of Forensic Science and the types of the crime scene and how to investigate the crime scene, just a brief of that. But before moving ahead towards the uh, recording of the crime scene, I would like to take here the physical evidences that what are physical evidences and what are their significance in Forensic Science. So please pay attention along with me. So we are going to start with physical evidences. You must have seen the physical evidences on the crime scene when you approach the crime scene. You see many evidence. As you can see with the definition here, anything in any state of matter. When we talk about any state of matter, we are talking about solid, liquid or gas. You must have seen certain physical evidences which are solid like firearm is there, tool is there, or anything like that. Any weapon like that may be solid. And it can be liquid, maybe blood, maybe semen, maybe saliva, like this, or it may be in the gaseous form, maybe an odor of a perfume, or maybe uh, smoke, anything like that. So it may be classified as the matter, or it may be in any form, physical, biological, or chemical. All the chemicals are taken as chemical form. All the biological material like blood, semen, saliva, plant material, and others are taken as biological form, and physical, which we can touch, and solid, like weapons which are encountered at the scene of crime or can link the crime with the criminal. So what we do with the evidence is we, they provide the link with the crime and the criminal. Okay. So what you see on the crime scene, you see the physical evidence on the crime scene and you try to link those physical evidences on the crime scene with the criminal. And which principle of forensic science is this? This is Locard's principle of exchange. And this is according to the Locard's principle of exchange. It means every contact leave traces. This all the principles we will discuss in the next slide for the introduction to forensic science. But uh, you have to remember Locard principle of exchange, and it says that whenever there is, uh, there is, there are two things comes in contact with each other, there happens a mutual exchange of measure. For example, if I am touching the desk, if I am imparting my fingerprints onto the desk, and the dust or dirt particle from the desk will come onto my fingerprints as well so this is how we are going to link the crime scene with the criminal and the crime now see these are the common types of physical evidences which are encountered at the crime scene there are various classifications of the crime uh, of the physical evidences but i would like to say here uh, the common types of physical evidences which can be encountered so first is the biological fluid category sorry for the mistake it should be six here but mistakenly i put five so pardon me for that so biological fluids any type of blood semen saliva urine vaginal secretion mucus tears sweat feces anywhere when they are encountered on the crime scene they may be on the clothes they may be on the victim's body they may be on the on the criminal's body or anywhere else so they are the biological fluid and most commonly found in murder cases or sexual assault cases impression evidences fingerprints footprints foot wear marks tool marks they are mostly found in the cases of theft in the cases of burglary maybe in the cases of murder as well but impression uh, like in cases of theft and burglary blood is very rarely to be encountered i will discuss the cases where blood can also be encountered if there is an injury uh, to the burglar or the thief during this crime so next is the caution document a very wide variety of caution document maybe it can be electronic document like any email it can be a suicidal note with handwritten or it may be homicidal note or it may be any signature crime you know signature crime when a person leaves his identity his identity in a way that is still nobody will be able to identify him so you must have watched many TV series like that so these are the document part any printed matter erased material secret writing or secret envelope pen drives all this comes in caution documents so caution document is a wide variety you can see and next is the trace evidences they are found in minute traces means you may overlook them you may uh, Oversight them if you will not be careful on the crime scene like hair, fiber, paint, chips, soil, dust and they are as important as the other evidences. Let's say the soil on the shoe, the, sh the soil on the footwear can identify an individual as like the DNA. Okay, so be aware of these trace evidences as well. Some hair can be 
used to extract the DNA and fiber can be used to establish the presence or absence of a person on the crime scene so as the paint chips in the collision cases, vehicle collision cases, accident cases etc. Then the chemicals, so chemicals have wide variety, not only alcohol or poisons but also certain chemicals, medicines, drugs, explosive residue or you may say cartridge case residue, bullet profile residue, all this comes in the chemical examination or chemical evidences. Next is the tools and the weapons. So there can be many types of tools which can be encountered on the crime scene. Now come to the source of the physical evidence. What is the major source of physical evidence? As you can see on the slide, I am really again very sorry to say it should be three. I don't know what happens to my system. So guys, pardon me for that. So the first basic source of the physical evidence is crime scene. And as we know from the first session, the crime scene is a place where the evidences can be encountered. So any type of evidence can be encountered on the crime scene. Crime scene is the first source of the physical evidence. The second source of physical evidence is the victim itself. If the victim is present on the crime scene, obviously there will, there will be many of the physical evidences which have been exchanged among the criminal and the victim. And the third physical uh, evidence source is the suspect and his environment. Let's say if I have committed a crime and I went back to my home, so again the footwear marks or whatever I have taken from the crime scene may reach to my home as well. So uh, in the suspect's environment and over the suspect as well, the evidences can be encountered. Now what we have to do, we need to look for the location of the physical evidences. And I told you in the second session that crime scene are primary, secondary and tertiary crime scene. So we have to locate the evidences on the primary crime scene, secondary crime scene and tertiary crime scene as well. And it also depends upon the circumstances of the crime. Mm -hmm. That what is the circumstance of the crime there. Now what is the significance of physical evidence? There are many significances of physical evidence. You know forensic science is all about analyzing the physical evidences itself. So we cannot rule out the significance of physical evidence. So first is to establish the corpus delicti. Corpus delicti, you know, the body of crime. And I also told you in the last session, if you have not watched it, watch the previous series. Corpus delicti or body of crime have nothing to do with the dead body. Body of crime means parts of crime scene. So what all are the parts of the crime scene that you can know with the help of the corpus delicti or the evidences wherever they are encountered. The second thing is from the corpus delicti itself that whether it is a genuine crime scene or fake crime scene means actually the crime has been committed or not. The next is to link the suspect with the victim or the crime scene that you know that how to link after the analysis it will be linked. To establish the identity of the person involved in the crime let's say you need to identify a person so if his fingerprints are encountered on the crime scene if his DNA is encountered, if his blood is encountered, if his shoe uh, impression, footwear impression has been encountered or any other such evidence have been encountered which establish the identity of the person that can also be done through the physical evidences. Then forensic science is not only about to punish the guilty person but also to eliminate the innocent, also to escape the innocent from the crime. So if somebody has been purposefully alleged in a crime scene and he is actually innocent so he can also be eliminated by saying that he is not related to crime based on the physical evidences encountered on the crime scene. Then to prove or disprove the victim witness or testimony. Let's say if I am saying that I have never visited the crime scene. So what the forensic expert has to do if my fingerprints are encountered there, if my fingerprints are encountered there it means I have visited the crime scene otherwise how my fingerprints have reached there can be other possibilities also but it has also to be proven then how my fingerprints have reached to the crime scene the other thing is if the suspect has confronted uh, the physical evidence if you say that your fingerprints have been encountered on the crime scene so many times in the court the suspect admits their guilt when they confront the evidence. If you will say that on a firearm your fingerprints are encountered, do you have something to say? So they will say yes I did it. So this is also another significance of physical evidence and of course to establish the modus operandi. 
you know mode of operation way of crime so by looking at the uh, the type of the evidences the events of the evidences we can easily find out that how the crime has been committed that further we will discuss in the next session with the help of the examples that how to establish the modus operandi and next is to establish the number of people involved or present at the scene of crime how many people were involved how many people were present at the crime scene how you will see this let's say you have three glasses encountered on the crime scene now my question to you is how many people were there on the crime scene so you probably say three you may say two you may say one one person can create the crime scene by three classes two persons can create the crime scene by three classes or there may be actually three persons but once we will do the fingerprint analysis on all the three glasses and we found there were three different types of fingerprints it means three different people were three or more people were there and if we found the same fingerprint on all the three glasses it is a fake or a staged crime scene okay you got it and next is collection of physical evidences which we will talk in our next session of physical evidence till then thank you very much